Hey folks, here OS Reviews. You're watching our video review of the LG FX0. This is a pretty interesting smartphone because it runs on the Firefox operating system, and it's also a mid-tier slash almost high-end smartphone, at least by any Firefox standards. When I say that, I mean it has a Snapdragon 400 processor, which is quad-core and clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. It has 1.5 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of built-in storage, expandable via a micro SD card, an 8 megapixel camera on the back, as well as a 5 megapixel front-facing camera. And those specs are, again, pretty mid-tier as far as Android phones are concerned, but compared to the rest of Firefox OS smartphones, that is decidedly high-end. The design here is also pretty interesting. The FX0 was originally only released in Japan, but it can now be picked up unlocked on Amazon as well as eBay for around $70, which makes it extremely affordable and inexpensive, especially when compared to other options out there. With that being said, I still feel like Firefox has a considerable length to go until it can really compete with Android as far as apps, smoothness, and the overall usability. However, it's a very solid phone at this price, and I'm going to explore some of the hardware and software details in this review. So taking a look at the form factor first, it's pretty easy to carry around. It has a 4.7 inch display in the front, which is an IPS panel that has very wide and great viewing angles. It has a 720p HD resolution, which is not 1080p, but not a huge deal breaker at this price point. It also has has a home key down below which has the Firefox logo as well. You can see that the phone itself has a semi-transparent look to it, especially on the back where you can see the SIM card, the micro SD card, as well as the battery, which is a 2350mAh capacity uh, battery. It's not too big, but it does allow the phone to run for about 1.5 to 2 days before you need to recharge it. And you can see that it has a pretty interesting retro 90s look to it. It's going to be a hit or miss depending on your personal style and preferences, but I think it's a pretty cool touch. It definitely di differentiates the FX0 from other phones currently in the market. On the sides, you have access to some detailed work, including the AU logo, which was the original Japanese carrier. On the other side, we have the FX0 uh, logo as well, which are all, again, pretty cool touches made by LG. The top features a 3.5mm jack, and the back features a 8 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash, and the very bottom here features the micro USB port for charging and syncing. And there's also a rear facing speaker, which is only so so. The sides also features access to a power on off switch, which is pretty tactile, easy to press, and also chrome etched, so it does look pretty fancy. And on the other side, there is a volume up and volume down, which is also pretty tactile, risen above the surface, and easy to press. That's basically the design. It's uh, made out of plastic, but it feels pretty good in the hand. It doesn't creak or cringe. The back has this slight texture to it, so it's easy to grip and feels like a high-end device. In terms of other specifications, it does use a micro SIM card, not a nano or a full-size SIM card, so that's something to take note of. And it does support only 3G bands here in the States, and that's with AT&T or T-Mobile. In our case, we're using Leica Mobile, which is on the same carrier network as T-Mobile. So you can see that the screen here has a respectable bezel size as well. In terms of Firefox uh, OS 2.1, uh, it runs pretty smoothly on the FX0. Of course, it has a lot higher end specs than most other Firefox OS smartphones that we've seen, such as the ZTE OpenC that we re uh, actually reviewed almost a year ago. Um, there are a few differences that have come since uh, the time that we reviewed that smartphone. For instance, we have a vertically scrolling homes page, which makes a bit more sense, especially if you're using the phone one-handed, and that's uh, the same thing can be said about different applications you might want to open or close. So let's say I want to open up the marketplace, and when I'm done with that, I'm going to press on the home key. In terms of multitasking, I can hold down the home key, and if I want to close an application, I'll also flick upwards. So you can see how everything is vertical, and you can use one-handed uh, gestures to operate them, which is, uh, again, a bit more consistent in terms of the operating system. Same thing goes with the drag down notification drawer. It's all vertical instead of some other horizontal details like the home pages. So that's an interesting change that we do appreciate. There's also a universal search bar right on top, which is quite useful. You can search through different addresses, uh, different phone numbers, contacts, as well as applications, and it works pretty decently. In terms of the drag down notification drawer, there's a slight amount of lag that you might notice or see there, and that's, I think, down to the operating system as opposed to the processor or the specs on here. That just shows that Firefox and Mozilla has a bit of optimization to do uh, still on their phones until they reach the level of smoothness, which currently Android phones have. However, it's not that big of a deal, and it still works pretty well. You have access to your notifications on the very top. There's also a battery status as well as signal status for Wi-Fi and your wireless connectivity for your your phone. 
Down below here, you have access to controls for the uh, wireless options like uh, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth. Uh, you have an airplane mode as well as settings to go into the settings directly. The placement down below here also makes a bit more sense than on top, which means that it's easier to reach along the home uh, key button. That's also a nice touch from the manufacturer there. I can tap on the settings key there just to go in and see uh, what's kind of changed or the specs of the phone. You can see that things are pretty smooth and they do resemble the icons you might find on an Android phone. So it's pretty easy to use and intuitive even for first time uh, smartphone users out there. In terms of built-in language support, you have access to English, Spanish, uh, Chinese as well. So there's a lot of different languages that are built in and out of the box. So you can change the actual keyboard language quite easily and we'll show you that in a moment. So in terms of the actual phone quality, the FX0 does a pretty good job uh, for making calls, which is quite important. Uh, the reception is good, is good and strong, and the microphone here is pretty decent as well. The speakerphone sounds a little bit tinny, but that's probably because the actual placement is on the, ver on the rear. Uh, in terms of in noisier conditions, there is a slight amount of echo that can be detected, at least on the T-Mobile network that we tested on, but it's not too crippling, and overall it has a pretty good experience in terms of making calls. The dial pad here is nice and large, it's easy to use, and looks pretty modern in terms of the OS and the graphical user interface. So other things on here include MMS text messaging. The web browser here is, of course, a highlight, uh, as we would expect um, from a Firefox OS smartphone, and it works decently as well. So if I want to tap on the first link that pops up there, you can see that after a few seconds, the page should load. We are using Wi-Fi right now, and uh, it does a pretty decent job. So kinetic scrolling works well, pinch and zoom works well as, as well, and the text automatically loads onto the width of the phone's display. I can also change it back onto the desktop mode if that's what you uh, want, and you can see that it's pretty lucid and responsive. Um, sometimes there is a little bit of lag if you scroll really fast before the page is fully loaded, but it's not too bad either. Um, you can view back any images, photos, flash elements directly inside of the browser as well. So if you want to watch YouTube videos, you would simply go into the web browser here and type in youtube.com and view back a video that way. So that's one of the interesting aspects of Firefox OS that we noted from the original ZTE Open that we reviewed is that a lot of applications are basically just uh, shortcuts into the web browser as opposed to mobile versions of an app that have been uh, developed so that they can work maybe offline. So everything here is very much cloud-based, uh, HTML-based, which is kind of the selling point and the differentiating point of Firefox OS phones. Um, it's pretty similar, I would say, to a Chromebook in the sense that if you don't have any wireless internet connectivity, you can't really play back many games or many apps, uh, which is a downside. But as long as you do have Wi-Fi or 3G in this case, it works pretty well because you have a large selection of apps as well as uh, different options for streaming video, playing back games, and it also doesn't take up as much memory than on a traditional Android phone. It offers a lot of flexibility as well in terms of different programs that you can run. Uh, in terms of built-in programs, we have access to a gallery, a music player, a clock, an FM radio. There's an email client built on here. Interestingly, there's also Facebook as well as a um, Jungla IM client, which is built in. This is kind of similar to WeChat, except it doesn't support uh, video chatting, I believe, at the time. However, it works pretty similar in terms of the interface. Uh, other things on here, you have the usage that tells you how much Wi-Fi or battery life that you've used. Then we have different uh, files that have been kind of organized under different folders, so like social, games, and music. So if I tap on games, we can see that there are many, many games which are not technically pre-installed on the device, but they do give you a shortcut into the web browser that allows you to play them. So as a result, they're not as extensive as some games that you might find on an iPhone or on an Android device just because it doesn't take up as much memory. So let's say we have, um, let's say, Retro Games. If I tap on this one, it's basically going to load up the Flash game in the web browser and allow me to interact with the content directly. It's actually not too bad. It works pretty smoothly and it's a great way for you to go through many, many games as opposed to only a select few if you have only, let's say, X amount of memory on your phone. However, you don't have something like Asphalt 5 or Asphalt 8 for racing. Uh, you don't have um, Assassin's Creed or games that are as extensive on the GPU uh, or even on the processor as most people would like, I would say. So it's more limited in the sense that the games that you have to play are more light, but you have a wider selection to pick from. 
So other things on here, you have access to social. So tapping on that brings up different things like your messages, contacts, email. You can also download more from the marketplace. There's also music apps on here as well. And they correspond to the FM radio. And there's some other recommended apps down below here as well, which you can launch through the web browser. Basically, they're just shortcuts. Uh, things like the Grammys that you can look through, soundboard, uh, and so on and so forth. And the marketplace on here is where you can go through and install more apps. I've installed YouTube here, but basically, again, that just launches the web browser and goes through to a mobile site version in the browser. So let's say I want to search up OS reviews. We can take a look at the keyboard as well. It's actually pretty responsive and easy to type on, despite having a 4.7 inch screen. So it's not as large as a 5 point uh, or a 5.5 inch screen, but it works pretty nicely. Um, it's sensitive, it's responsive, thanks to the capacitive touchscreen on here, and it works nicely. You can also select through different languages uh, quite easily. So that's that can be done by pressing on the uh, key down below here. For example, this will go through the pinyin, which is for the Chinese character input. And this goes back to English. And you can see there is a pop-up, so even if your finger is covering the key, you can still see where you're typing. And there is no swipe support out of the box, but you can install that by yourself. If that's something that you like, and it works pretty nicely. So here we have a video. Let's just see how it loads up. It loads pretty quickly. We can also flip the screen to get a large screen view. So let's click on the full screen icon if we can find that. There we go. And you can see that the actual video experience is actually pretty decent. Uh, it works nicely and you can plug in a pair of headphones and of course enjoy them when you're on the road. Uh, the speaker here again does a decent job but it's not the loudest speaker uh, nor is it the most rich sounding speaker in the world but it's a decent one built onto this phone. So the use of only one key in terms of uh, all the user interfaces actually is pretty simple and easy to get used to. You can simply, again, tap on it for a few seconds longer to go through the multitasking and also to close up different programs. It reminds me a lot of the HP uh, WebOS, which we really liked uh, a few years ago. So it's quite simple and easy to operate. Everything seems to be gesture-based, which is a good direction to go to. And I feel like uh, it feels a bit more polished in terms of U UI consistency than what we saw from the original Firefox OS that came out two years ago. So basically that's it as far as main programs are concerned. The last thing I'm going to go through is the camera on here. It does have uh, autofocus, so it does work pretty nicely. Uh, the images on here are pretty saturated and realistic to the actual shot, and they are pretty quick to capture as well in terms of your shots. I can also go through and record video up to 720p HD resolution. Tapping on settings here allows me to turn on or off HDR mode, self-timer modes, and grid lines. So you have a wide array of different selections to go from. There's also a flash that works decently, although it does tend to overexpose the subjects if you are too close to them at night. There's also the ability for you to flip to the front camera, and that also works pretty nicely. It actually captures a good amount of light, so even if you are in a darker environment, you can still video chat using applications like Skype, and it still picks up your face pretty nicely. So overall, the actual camera experience is decent. Um, you can also zoom in and out, uh, and you can also send them to friends and family using a social uh, network on the very top there. So overall, a decent camera on here. It's not the best, certainly not the worst. In terms of the UI and the graphical user interface, there is a slight update to what we saw from before. Things look more sleek and more elegant as well as more modern. So an example would be the clock app. You can see how it looks pretty nice in terms of the interface for a built-in app. You can go through timers, stopwatches, everything works very smoothly. Uh, there's kinetic scrolling on here as well. And no matter what app you're in, you have access to the very top, which shows search the web. So you can instantly search the web no matter what application you're in, which is quite an interesting selling point and a unique aspect of Firefox OS. So once I'm in the web browser, let's say I want to search OS reviews. The search bar also kind of disappears sometimes uh, if I'm scrolling down just to save on space. So you can see how it becomes smaller. And when I'm scrolling up, it pops up again. So it's a pretty nice implementation. I can also go back and forth between different pages and apps just by scrolling really fast between left and right. So that allows me to launch back into the previous program I used, which is the clock. So this is multitasking coming into play here. A slight amount of lag, as you can see there, so it's not as smooth in terms of the transition work as Android is at the moment, but I think that's something that will be refined in time. And certainly with a Snapdragon 400 quad-core processor, um, I expected it to be a little bit more snappy in this department, but again, I think it's something that uh, it's an operating system which will see continuous work and development down the road.
So at the end of the day, the Firefox, uh, where I, I should say the LG FX0 Firefox smartphone, is an interesting choice because it is basically the highest end Firefox OS smartphone that you can purchase on the market at the moment. Uh, it's filled with a lot of potential and the hardware on here is definitely a very interesting. Processor and specs are decidedly middle of the road in terms of the entire smartphone industry, but they're high end for a Firefox OS device and the design is certainly very eye-catching. Battery life is good, call quality is good, and speeds are pretty decent and responsive, uh, but Everything that we loved as well as not really loved about Firefox OS still comes to fruition here, and that includes the inability to play really heavy apps, uh, but also the ability for you to play a wide array of apps. Uh, the web browser is a highlight here, and the camera also performs pretty nicely. So to learn more information about the LG FX0, be sure to read our full written review on our website. This has been our video. Thanks for watching. Here at OS Review.